Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss a topic which is not only important for microeconomics, macroeconomics and economics in general, but is very important for business and finance and all the branches of economics. This is the foundation of understanding how markets work. So today we are going to speak about the demand. Uh, we'll cover law of demand, demand curve, shifts in the curve. Next we are going to separately speak about the second market force which is supply. We'll cover law of supply, supply curve and shifts in the curve. And finally we will try to understand these two forces together and we will also discuss the concept of market equilibrium. So let us start from demand. So what is law of demand? The law of demand is the claim that other things equal and this is very important. So in our next chapters the models we will be discussing and the laws we will be discussing in majority of those the phenomenon we are observing is other things equal this is very important requirement so again the claim that other things equal the quantity demanded of a good falls when the price of the good rises is called law of demand let us try to understand this law on a real-life situation. Let's say that you are hungry, you have ten dollars and you want to buy some pizza. So let us understand how the price of pizza will affect your decision to purchase and will affect the quantity of the pizza slices that you want to purchase. So here we have three scenarios in first scenario the price of pizza is ten dollars and let's say that you are very hungry in that case you are ready to spend all of your ten dollars just to get this one slice if the pre pizza price is five dollars in this scenario you can think of buying two slices of pizza right and the last scenario if the price goes down to two dollars now you can afford five slices of pizza and as you are very hungry you will most probably buy all of them. Now let us try to understand how this schedule, by the way this is called demand schedule when we get uh, prices of a product in one column and quantity in the other column. So let us now also try to understand the demand curve and let us graph our demand schedule and get the demand curve. So basically as you can see demand curve shows graphically what we have already discussed. This is important to understand that the slope of the demand curve is negative again as the price and quantity have negative correlation here. So the core idea here to remember is that all the points of quantities of pizza that you can afford are on this line and you can find all the possible situations with different prices and respectfully different quantities demanded on this line. However, there are certain situations when the changes of the quantity demanded are not on the line and these new quantities uh, you can found out of the line. This situation is secure when the demand curve is affected with one of many demand shifters. 
Let us discuss some of the most important factors here. So, one is income. And let us think about this. Let's say uh, all of a sudden you have found another ten dollars when walking to the closest restaurant to buy a pizza. What will happen now? Now you have twenty dollars, right? Your budget is twice as big. And now for the price of ten dollars you can afford two slices of pizza. And for the price of five dollars you can afford four slices of pizza. So your demand or the quantity demanded doubled. And the other situation, let's say you are walking down the street to go to the restaurant and buy pizza and all of a sudden you have realized that you have lost your ten dollars. Now you have, let's say, uh, five dollars. In this scenario, obviously, you cannot afford any pizza for ten dollars. And you need to wait until the price goes down to five dollars. And in this scenario only, you can afford one uh, slice of pizza. So, basically, the income shifts the demand curve. And there is a positive correlation between your income and income of the market in general and the quantity demanded for the product and for the service. <clears throat> However, there are two important points to remember here. First, that there are normal products and normal products the market behaves exactly in the way we have discussed already. So income goes up and the quantity demanded goes up. At the same time, we have the second group of products, which are called inferior products. And these products are described with a situation when your income goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. And a good example we can see here, a bus and let's say a car. When your income goes down, in this scenario, most probably you will not be able to afford cars anymore and you will be left with uh, using public transportation and in this case basically the demand your personal demand towards service of buses or let's say subway will increase and this is just one example of normal and inferior products. In economics, the junk food is considered very usually as an inferior product, etc., uh, etc. Et so let us also discuss the second very important demand shifter. This is a price of a related good. So let us firstly try to understand what we mean by saying related good. There are two types of related goods. First are substitutes. And as you can see here, uh, substitutes are, for example, for example, hot dogs and hamburgers. So the core idea about substitutes is the following. These are two types of different products which satisfy similar or the same need for the customer. So basically speaking, if there is no difference for you whether to purchase a hot dog or a hamburger, and if we see a situation when, uh, let's say, all of a sudden the price of hamburgers doubled in one day, what will be your rational decision? Most probably, you will go and buy more hot dogs that day, right? So, in case of substitutes, the price, the increase in price of a substitute product increases the demand for the other product by shifting the demand curve and the other way around. And the other group are complements. So, complements are the products which usually are used together. A good example is petroleum or gasoline and car. 
So basically, to drive a car, you need gasoline. And important thing to remember here that the price prices of complement products go in the same direction. So basically, if the price of gasoline goes up, the demand towards cars decreases by shifting the demand curve. This is important. Why? Because basically driving a car will be more expensive for you and if we return and try to link this to the law of demand, increase in a price or cost of certain product will eventually result in a lower quantity demanded. Next demand shifter is taste. This is very important today, especially today when brands uh, play a very important role. We have a lot of different brand communities, etc. So there are situations when <clears throat> price does not decide the quantity demanded only, right? Let's say the Apple community, even if Apple increases the price of its products, uh, many customers, and we observe this today, are still willingly paying more just to get the Apple product. So this is about tests. The other example is expectations. And the, by saying expectations, we are basically speaking expectations about future of market, expectations about your income. For instance, if you are certain that your income will triple next month, this month you are more likely to spend more and decrease the rate of your savings, right? So positive expectations generally increase demand. And the most obvious demand shifter is the number of buyers. The idea here is if all of a sudden the number of buyers, customers, consumers increases, the demand shifts, increasing the demanded quantity. A very good example is a situation when during holidays uh, in certain areas the number of buyers increases because of incoming tourists. You can just observe how uh, demand towards certain products changes. So next let us discuss the other market force which is supply. So while demand was on the buyer side, the supply is on the supplier side or namely companies and businesses, right? Again, as in case of the demand, we have a law of supply, which is the claim that other things equal, the quantity supplied of a good rises when the price of the good rises. And here we basically have a different logic. And the logic here is that the price go up, the willingness of suppliers to produce more and sell more go up. Again, let us understand why. Firstly, to fully understand this concept, you need to remember that there are two types of costs, fixed costs and uh, variable costs. And firstly, to enter to any business, organization should assure that it can maintain certain profit margin. It should assure that it is profitable. And the first thing to do is to calculate your fixed costs and understand whether your product can cover these costs. And the next part are variable costs, which increase with the number of products produced. So in both cases of variable costs and fixed costs, increasing the price increases your profitability, increases your profit margin, and thus provides incentives for suppliers and businesses to produce more products and services. So again, we can uh, graph this schedule, and by the way, this schedule is called supply schedule. We can graph this, and here we'll get a supply curve, which in difference to a demand curve, has a positive slope. And as we can see, the graph shows exactly what was mentioned in the law of supply. 
the quantity supply increases with when the prices go up. As in case of demand, the supply also have its shifters or the factors which shift the supply curve. Again, the supply, we have here a visual representation of supply curve shifting to right and uh, left by increasing and decreasing the quantity uh, supplied at a given price. So again, let us discuss some of the most popular uh, factors affecting the curve. First are input prices. Again, this is directly linked to what we were discussing previously, to your costs. If your costs for input prices go up, this decreases your uh, profitability margin and thus decreases incentives for suppliers, organizations to produce more, and vice versa. The other is technology. And here, by saying technology, we primarily mean situations when technology is used in uh, organizations to make their production cycles, their production activities more productive. Basically, uh, the idea is that organizations applying new technologies can reduce their costs and thus increase their profitability margin and thus they will be more incentivized to produce more. Next, expectations. Again, this is very big uh, point here, including many different situations, but we are speaking about expectations, about market and about income. Good expectations generally incentivize suppliers to produce more. And bad expectations, let's say, volatile political environment, these incentivize suppliers to reduce their production and basically transfer their capital in a more safe and predictive geographic locations. And the most obvious one, number of sellers. If all of a sudden you have more sellers, in this case your supply will increase and for the same price you will have more quantity supplied. And a good example to think about this point is to think about situation when uh, economy is closed, economy does not engage into international trade and all of a sudden they open the borders and the international trade uh, starts to affect the local market. The Soviet Union is an interesting example. If you are interested, you can go and look for this. And now the third, last point. Let us also try to understand how these two forces interact together in market. And here we need to grab these two curves to understand what happens here. Now, as you can see, we have two curves, supply with its positive slope and demand with its negative slope. And as you can see, there is this one point, a point of intersection. And this is a very important point, which is called equilibrium. Equilibrium is a situation in which the market price has reached the level at which quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. And obviously and consequently the equilibrium price is the price that balances quantity supplied and quantity demanded and equilibrium quantity is the, the quantity, basically the quantity uh, which is both supplied and demanded at the equilibrium price. You should keep in mind that markets in long term tend to convert to equilibrium point. In long term, suppliers and buyers, or the demand side, they uh, engage into negotiations in a free market and through the, neg and through the neg negotiations they generally reach to this point which is called equilibrium. This is the standard situation in the long term for free markets. 
However, there are two situations when we deviate from this long-term equilibrium. And these situations are called surplus and shortage. So when surplus uh, occurs, surplus occurs in a situation when the price is higher than the equilibrium price. What will happen? As you can remember from our laws, higher price will incentivize suppliers to produce more. However, at the same time, buyers will be incentivized or de-incentivized to buy more. They will buy less. And there will be this difference between the quantity supplied and quantity demanded, the positive difference. And this difference will be surplus. The other situation is when the price is below the equilibrium price. And in next chapters, by the way, we will discuss the situations in which this may occur due to governmental intervention or certain short-term fluctuations. Again, returning to a shortage. In this scenario, if price goes down, buyers want to buy more. And suppliers are de-incentivized to produce more. So buyers will demand more quantity of the product than suppliers actually produce. And there will be shortage. And the shortage will be equal quantity demanded minus quantity supplied. The same logic as we calculate the surplus quantity supplied minus quantity demanded. So that's it. That's it for the review of this chapter.